It was a battle of the teammates as the Amtoil Grand National Cross Country Series hit Georgia. Caleb Russell and Charlie Mullen put on a show, shadowing each other throughout the three-hour event, with Russell coming out on top. They're tied in points. What will happen today? Welcome to Racer TV's coverage of the Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Series. Jason Wygant here at the beautiful Steel Creek Campground for the FMF GNCC Round 3 of this 13 race 2013 championship. Morning race riders out there right now, those are amateur riders, the weekend warrior types. And warriors they are. But that doesn't take anything away from the afternoon riders who show some heart as well. They're just full-time trained, practice, tested, and tuned athletes. It's been a battle of the FMF KTM teammates. Caleb Russell and Charlie Mullins went at it here at our opener, the Parks Unlimited River Ranch GNCC in the sand of Florida. In the end, Mullins was able to make a late race pass, take the lead, and sprint to the finish, take the victory on the number 112. Russell there on the right wanted to get revenge in round two, the Maxis General GNCC in Georgia, and they went at it. Again, opening up some distance on the rest of the field. Mullins tried to mount a last gasp pass again, but would be denied. It's Russell taking the win. He's got some momentum coming into this race here at round three. Yeah, definitely uh, the start of the season went really, has uh, gone really well. Um, able to come away with a second at Florida versus Georgia. And, but yeah, it uh, changes the, um, the mindset drastically. You know, you're not in catch-up mode. You know, you can kind of chill out and just, just uh, make sure you put together solid finishes week in and week out and uh, position yourself uh, according to the race. You know, if you're not having a good day, you can always uh, not push the envelope. You know, you've, it's still early in the season and you're not having to make up so many points. So you can kind of just, you know, you're in the hunt. You don't have to, you don't have to win. You can uh, kind of sit there and uh, just let the race come to you. As Russell here as part of opening ceremonies, last year didn't finish that opener in Florida and was in comeback mode all year. Mullen started the year off well last year and then bad luck struck him at mid-season. So anything can happen. You look at the likes of Thad Duval, the number 10, Chris Bach. Don't forget about the 80 of Josh Strang. The number one, of course, your defending champion, Paul Wibley. There are plenty of other riders that can get in this. Just because the KTMs have won the first two rounds doesn't mean any of those other riders are eliminated. Not by a long shot. And no surprise, it's Wibbs on the Ampro Yamaha grabbing the whole shot. He grabbed everyone last year. He has grabbed everyone this year. All balls racing. Going to hook him up with some extra cash. And we're off and running into the woods immediately. And a good start for his teammate, Jordan Ashburn, to the number nine as well. So the Yamahas have their starts dialed in. And this is what GNCC racing is all about. Everyone sprinting through the trees, trying to find the right lines, and trying to go fast early. It's a three-hour race. These guys still hammer from the get-go. Look at Russell up to third, makes a mistake. Ashburn tries to get it back from him, and then he goes down. Ricky Russell, newcomer out of Washington in second, and the stuck number 22 there is Adam Banor. And uh, some of the Yamaha folks are actually, I think, helping him out. Hey, just whatever it takes to get going. We, we like to call them the mud fleas in GNCC. They'll grab on you, and they won't let go. Let's go back to the start for XC2. This is your 250 class, and they're sprinting across the line. Sam Evans on a KTM grabbing the whole shot. Another one of the kids graduating through the amateur ranks, so digitaloffroad.com going to hook him up with some money. Man, it seems like it wasn't that long ago when we saw Evan, Evans on a 65s and 85s in our youth ranks here. They move up quickly. Certainly a young man's game, this motorcycle racing, and that's what the XC2 class is here for. First two rounds of the year won by Andrew DeLong. One of the riders gets run into a tree. Can't pick up the number there. Uh, DeLong, though, not known for his starts. Here they are into the mud. Evans goes down, and I think that's Grant Baylor up to the number one spot. And I just saw DeLong go by in what I believe is third. And it is a wild scramble for everyone else. Just getting roosted, getting bombed by mud. Aaron Plessinger, the number 20, just came through. First race of the year for him. And look at how big this class is. About 35 entries in XC2, about 20 in the XC1 division. 
And then you have your B and your A amateur classes that will be out here as well. Competing for top amateur awards and class championships. And this mud hole is only going to get worse as it gets dug out by these pros. Wibley still leading Ricky Russell. Russell, again, out of Washington State, newcomer to the series. Looks like it, uh, Caleb Russell, that is, up in the number three spot. So two Russells out here keep track of no relation. And it is a mad scramble back there. We just caught a glimpse of Charlie Mullins, who won the opener at Florida time for the points lead. He's out of the top five right now. The 11 is Takeshi Koikina, the Honda. He just came through. Then it was Mullins. Then it's Josh Strang. That's the number 10 of Chris Bach. And if you've watched GNCC racing before, you know how this works. As Russell tries to go after Wibley for the lead, He's trying to make a breakaway. He wants to make the pass and don't let anyone see him. Mullins is doing the same thing. He just went up the middle trying to make passes. The rest of these riders, they just want to stay in touch. They don't want Russell to do this. He's got the lead from Wibley. He takes a look over his shoulder. He's got a good gap already. It's very hard to catch someone if you can't see them. I believe that's Rory Mead in second, then Mullins in third. Those are the riders that will be tasked with trying to keep Caleb Russell in sight. And Wibley on the number one is way back after leading this thing early. Now, the word on the street is that Wibley is actually riding with a broken hand. They were trying to keep that secret as you see Mullins going after Meade for second. But apparently that hand injury might be a factor for the Axeman today, and it must be bad because they do not come any tougher than Paul Wibley. Here he is, and he was so consistent last year en route to a championship been a real jinx of GNCC champs the last few years. Mullins here, now up to second, can attest to that. He had basically everything that could go wrong, go wrong last year when he was running the number one plate. Strang back and forth, Russell pushed back to fifth. Everyone in a mad dash to try to keep the lead KTM duo in sight. Eddie Engine. Any season. At home. At the track. Or on the trail. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil by Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and by Can-Am. Caleb Russell, out of Ohio, now makes his racing home in North Carolina leads. Good to see Josh Strang up to the number three spot. And that is the sophomore pro Ashburn up to fourth. I say it's good for Strang. Strang missed the entire year last year with a broken leg. It was actually scheduled to race of the work series out west, but the injuries really prevented him from ever getting his speed up. Strang, of course, won this title a few years ago. He's going over the log here in the number 80. That's the Rocky Mountain Maxis Kawasaki. Strang was good at the opener, was third overall, and then just off the podium at round two. Looks stronger today. Into the mud we go. Russell a little bit smoother through here than his teammate Mullins. And Strang hits the deep stuff and gets to Kawasaki stuck. A couple of fans, I'm sure, are over there helping him out, but there is a very determined Ashburn trying to get by him. Ashburn has been aggressive through these muddy sections today. KTM boys still chasing each other around. Strang in third. The gap here as we approach lap three, about 30 seconds, give or take. So he's, again, just out of viewing range. Even on the longest straightaway, you're not going to see someone 30 seconds in front of you. And that's what the two KTM boys did early. They were a lot more aggressive on the opening lap than you normally see. I think they're flexing their muscle. They feel like they're fast enough to get that kind of gap on everyone. And you can see Strang and Ashburn are the ones that are really pushing to try to prevent it from happening. A normal circumstances, you don't really see riders fight that hard to get the lead early. But I think Mullins and Russell have the confidence to feel that we can just get to the front ourselves. We'll settle it between the two of us. 
We're not going to mess with anyone else. It's up to Strang and Ashburn to prove otherwise. They're pushing the pace. They're matching the pace. They've got to make up just a little bit of ground to get back in sight. We go back to XC2. It looks like DeLong has taken the lead. Baylor. And that's third, Jason Thomas, your defending champ on the dirt-wise. ShaneWatts.com KTM. And then it's Plessinger up to fourth on the Rock River Yamaha. Now it looks like... Thomas is up to second ahead of Baylor and Plessinger closing in. Plessinger is the son of a multi-time former GNCC champion Scott Plessinger, but he's actually more of a motocrosser. And he is pressing Baylor right now. And it's interesting, Baylor and Plessinger have had some battles way back onto the mini cycle days and in the amateur ranks. And here they are battling for third in XC2 behind Thomas and your leader who is DeLong. No change in the running order in the XC1 class. See, it's uh, still Russell over Mullins, then Strang, and this is Ashburn in fourth. But they are just not lifting. You can see the difference in speed and aggression with these two. Now, Strang, I think, is going for it. He's running a good pace. And he's smooth while doing it. But uh, those two up front, they are treating it like a race. They are not following each other around. I know Mullins is back there, but you can tell he wants to lead in the worst way. He is really pushing Russell to the limit. And I just feel like you don't normally see this type of aggression early on. I hope it doesn't cost them. Remember, you got to have endurance. You got to be strong to the end in GNCC racing. We'll be back with more after this. Sometimes you come across something so different, you just have to stop and check it out. The Rocky Mountain ATV MC website has everything you need, from our huge selection of apparel and gear to dirt bike accessories and OEM parts. Our extensive inventory means most orders arrive in three days or less. Get low prices, quick shipping, and incredible customer service. RockyMountainATVMC.com. Get ready. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. And by Can-Am. Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Racing is the place to be whether you're a spectator or a racer. Upcoming events, including force bikes and ATVs, include the John Penton GNCC in Ohio and the Parts Unlimited Mountaineer GNCC in Masontown, West Virginia. We hope to see you there in the late stages of spring. And you can go out there and test yourself against the best in the world. Here's Josh Strang in third, still digging, still pushing on that Rocky Mountain Maxis Amsoil Kawasaki. And this could be his chance to make up ground of the leaders there in the pits. Mullins and Russell flying in formation. So many similarities between their programs except for one major thing, the motorcycle. Mullins, who is now in the lead, and Russell, who is second. Mullins rides the 450, Russell the 350. Here is Strang into his Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com pits. And that's our TV producer, Jason Hooper, making sure there's a fresh GoPro on the top of his helmet. Maybe we'll get some footage here in the second half. Strang's got to go, and he does. And we got the helmet cam bolted on. Good job, Hoops. So it's the GoPro Hero 3 on board, and that's some lap traffic that Strang's got to get around. We're into the two mile mark, and you're gonna see just how fast these guys go in some very tight trails. And then when it opens up, Strang really opens it up. So that pit stop, you can't really gamble. I mean, he had the opportunity to maybe pit late. As you see, Mullins still leading Russell. Strang could have maybe skipped his pit. He would have caught the guys, maybe passed them. But then you're taking the chance, obviously, of running out of gas. But sometimes cycling through a little differently could make all the difference. Here's Strang with the helmet cam on here in the mud. And this time he makes it. getting an idea of just how critical lap traffic is to, uh, to these races. And that's what I'm talking about with that early race aggression by your lead duo. A lot of times all that work is for naught. You catch lap traffic, it slows you down. Maybe you get taken down by one of those riders. And all that work you did to build up the lead, it could be gone in a second. Although Strang, as you can see, has his hands full with it. Oh! 
and Strang goes down and you can hear him yelling. That wasn't frustration. I think he was yelling in pain. You gotta be careful, those bridges are very slippery. Obviously, he was uh, throwing caution to the wind, trying to catch the leaders. Hope he's okay. Check it back in, it looks like a Russell has retaken the lead from Mullins and actually opened it up a little bit. Maybe a chess match between these two. As for Ashburn, he has taken over third from the now down Strang, who we hear might be out of this race. Stay with us. What do you call a machine? that combines precision-engineered handling, industry-leading power, and a rider-focused design. We call it a Can-Am. From the essentials to fully loaded, you'll find that same combination in every ATV and side-by-side -side we build. And right now, get your own for as low as $149 a month. Can-Am, the ride says it all. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil. By Rocky Mountain ATV MC. And by Pan Am. Welcome back, Racer TV's coverage, FMF Steel Creek GNCC. And FMF happy about this. Two KTMs, both of the FMF products, have been dominating today, but it's Charlie Mullins who has taken the lead back from Caleb Russell as we approach the last lap. Two or three times they have swapped it today. Now we're hearing that uh, Russell suffering from an illness coming into this one, and maybe that has caught up to him. He's trying to catch up to Mullins, who is in the pits. And the bottom has really dropped out of it for Russell. They were matching each other on lap times then. On laps five and six, Mullins a good 30 seconds faster each time around. And they're saying, Russell, you're all right on fuel. You can keep going. So he's going to get a little bit of that distance back. He's just over a minute behind entering this last lap. But does he have the strength left to truly make a run at Mullins? Or is that illness uh, maybe enough to cost him the opportunity for the win? And now it's going to come down to mistakes or lack thereof, and a good job by Mullins to negotiate the mud to get through the ruts. Some fans cheering Russell on here in second. They want to see him make a race of it. Look at that. They call that grinding when the rear wheel is in a rut and the front wheel is on top the whole way. Third place now, the number 10 of Chris Bach. Swapping it with Jordan Ashburn, Bach on the uh, KTM, and I'll tell you, he and Ashburn had some duels back in their amateur days, so good to see those two hooking back up again. Uh, both are based uh, not too far from the area. Ashburn's a southern boy, he's from Tennessee. Bach originally from Indiana, but he lives not too far from here in uh, Mooresville, North Carolina. Bach here even backed by one of the local KTM shops, Carolina KTM, and also RidePG.com helping set that machine up. And he's making it look good. He's been uh, bounced around on a couple of brands the last few years. Was once a factory beta rider. Really seems comfortable now on the orange mount. And it could be a sweep. Could be three KTM riders on the XC1 podium today. Here's Russell still maintaining the number two position. Remember what he said at the beginning of the show. Some days you're not feeling it. You've just got to score points. He certainly was feeling it at the beginning of the day where he's leading the laps. But uh, the final hour of this three-hour affair has not gone his way. And again, he has an illness coming in. That might make the difference. There's Bach in third. And Mullins just motoring away on that 450 XC. Russell second, but not a serious threat as far as the gap right now as we hit the home stretch. But points-wise, they continue to build a cushion on everyone else. They're the class of the field right now. It looks like it'll be another 1-2 finish for FMF KTM. The question is, what will the order be? Well, Charlie Mullins answers it with authority. In the final hour, he takes the lead and then pulls away. Charlie Mullins wins the FMF Steel Creek GNCC. That's two wins in three rounds so far this year. Best start ever for Mullins in a GNCC campaign. Russell second. But they say the titles are won on your worst days, and if this is a bad one for him, he finishes second. He'd still be pretty happy with that. And well done. Up on the podium, the privateer KTM man, Chris Bach. 
Doing it for Carolina KTM and RidePG.com. And there's got to be a lot of people supporting him in the local area that are going to be happy to see him up on the big stage. Now, battle is still raging in XC2. How about this? Thomas has led most of the laps today, but the kid, Plessinger, is all over him. And as they run through this field section the last time, this could be Plessinger's environment. He's a motocrosser, and he does make the move on the outside of Thomas. Thomas is aggressive. He'll come back at you. Here it is. He's going to try to run the outside. There wasn't a rut, though, to bank off of. Plessinger, his first race of the year, is going for victory. Not going to sit well with the champ. Thomas tries to square him up again. Checkered flag is out, and Plessinger takes it on the Rock River. Yamaha, what a race down the line, and a high five out. Respect to each other. They pushed it for all it was worth. What racing in XC2. Here's Ramsoyle results in XC1. You know the top uh, three. Then it was Ashburn and Mead, top five. Wibley and Strang, by the way, 11th and 12th. Strang twisted his knee, and Wibley has that hand injury, so that's really going to shake up the points. Bach is up to third, although a big gap to you-know-who, who's out front, and you-know-who else, who is in second. Thad Duvall also had trouble today. He finishes sixth. Yeah, it feels good to kind of win a hometown race. So uh, a lot of fans out here and uh, a lot of family, so I'm glad that I get a win. And uh, they didn't start off too good. I didn't get a very good start. And I uh, just kind of picked my way around the guys and, uh, and found my way in second at the end of the first lap. And kind of me and Caleb were together again and broke away. And he made a mistake uh, with about two laps to go. Uh, he ended up crashing on a log, so I, I went around him and was able to get a little breathe in the room and uh, just kind of rode, rode steady the last two laps and uh, held a good lead and brought it in for the win. So I'm happy to get the points lead back. Here's the results brought to you by Amsoil here in XC2. Plessinger just beats Thomas. Great effort on uh, both those riders. DeLong's win streak has snapped the two. Grant Baylor, 15-year-old, up on the podium. Jedediah Haynes rounds out the top five. Give the Amsoil race recap. No surprise, Paul Wibley has the whole shot of the Ampro Yamaha, but he was struggling today with a, a hand injury. Caleb Russell, blood of the waters, went after it, took the lead, but then Charlie Mullins on the 112 caught him, and those two engage in a great race for the first two-thirds of this event. The focus shifts to XC2 and a phenomenal battle down the stretch. Jason Thomas and Aaron Plessinger this close at the line. Plessinger takes it. Shout out to Chris Bach, third overall today. But the man of the hour, well, the man of the three hours, is Charlie Mullins once again. For everyone at Racer TV, I'm Jason White. Thanks for watching.